Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the tub to pump hose on your front load washer. Sometimes foreign objects will get down into that hose and it may cause a hole in it and therefore a leak. But it's a really easy job to change, so let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, the first thing we'll need to do is to disconnect power to the washer. So simply unplug it. Now the part that we're replacing is located down in this area and you can do it with the washer standing upright, but it is fairly tight area to work in. We found that it may be easier to lay the washer on its back and do the repair that way. Now before we do that, we'll want to disconnect the inlet water hoses and we'll also want to disconnect the drain hose and drain any residual water out of that hose. Then we'll remove the main top, which is held in place with a couple of screws across the back. We'll also need to remove the control panel, which will involve taking the dispenser drawer out and a couple of screws on this side. Once we remove that, we can then take the complete front panel and door assembly off and access that hose from above. So with the power disconnected and the inlet fill hoses and drain hose disconnected, we pull the washer forward. We'll next remove those two screws that secure the top panel. And then just slide that top panel back with a half an inch, and then you can lift it off and set it aside. Now next we'll remove the detergent drawer. Let's just pull it out until it comes up against the stop. Reach back in on the left hand side there. Press that tab down and pull the drawer completely out. Now with that removed, there will be three screws on this side of that control panel that need to be removed as well. The longer one on the far left, and two shorter ones in the center that are stainless steel screws, so we'll keep those separate from the rest. We also have two screws down through the top, we'll go through plastic tabs that are attached to that control panel. We'll need to remove those. And just open the door up. We'll lift up on the center portion of that control panel to disengage some little tabs that protrude from the bottom of that panel down into the top of the metal front panel. And then we can lift it off with that crossbar across the top of the panel. Just apply enough force to pull it away from the bottom and carefully slide it away from the top. Once we've disengaged that, we can just tilt that panel up and out of the way. Now next we're going to lay that washer on its back. We'll need to make sure that we've removed any water from that drain hose. And the machine is also fairly heavy so you'll want to get some assistance in lowering it gently onto its back and also to make sure that we protect that control panel at the same time. Now that we've removed the top and the control panel, We've already laid the washer on its back, although you can do some of this beforehand, it doesn't really matter. We're going to open that door up, have somebody support that, and then we need to remove the band that holds that bellows to the front panel. There's a little spring right at the very bottom at the six o'clock position. We're simply going to take a pair of needle nose pliers and grasp the hook on the end of the band where it attaches to that spring. We grip on that and we'll pull it towards us so that we stretch the spring and release some of the tension on that band and then we can lift it off. We'll set that aside for now and we'll just peel that bellows away from the front panel all the way around. And then tuck it down inside. Now next we'll re Remove the two screws that secure this plate over top of the door lock assembly. That actually holds the door lock to the back of the front panel. And keep these two screws separate from the rest of the panel screws and just set that aside. We can then close that door back up. And then we're going to remove four screws across the bottom of the front panel and three across the top that were hidden underneath of the control panel. Now with 
those screws removed, we're simply going to slide that front panel and door assembly towards the top of the washer, just about a quarter of an inch. And reaching under the lip at the top and the bottom. And we'll be able to turn that door, we'll be able to turn that front panel far enough around that we can access a little clip that holds the wire harness for the door lock to that panel. Simply depress those little arrowhead fasteners on that clip to release it from the front panel and then we can lift that off. That is the clip and it fits into this round hole just below the keyhole slot on the top of that panel. So just let that drape out of the way. Now with the front panel removed we now have access to that tub to pump hose. And we'll begin by taking the large clamp off of the base of the outer tub. It's a screw type clamp. We can use a Phillips screwdriver to loosen that. off of the top of that hose enough to loosen it. The next we'll release the clamp that attaches that hose to the air dome tube for the pressure switch. Either from above or from below. Squeeze that spring clamp, push it down on the hose. You should be able to then take that air dome tube and pull that off. Just take the screwdriver and and pry that hose away from that air dome tube enough to break the bond. Then all the remains is to remove the hose from the inlet to the pump. There's a clamp on the right hand side of that hose. Again, we'll just reach in with our pliers. Just push that hose back out of the way. Compress the clamp and then pull the hose straight off. Now with that hose out of the way, it's also a good idea to disconnect this air dome tube from the side of the tub. There's a little arrowhead fastener that comes down through a tab on the tub. So if you reach underneath, you find that little tab, and then just depress one or both sides of it, and then you can tilt that up out of that opening. Then if you wish, you can just release the air dome tube from the top of that. Press the clamp. Slide it up the hose. Then we can pull that off. And that'll make it easier to install this part onto the tub to pump hose. Now next we'll need to do three things is remove these clamps from the old tub to pump hose. We'll also need to remove the coin trap that is down inside of it and we'll transfer all of those over to the new hose.
Now that coin trap has a flange on the top of it, and normally it will sit right in this part of the bellows where the second rib is. So we'll need to force that up through from the bottom. coin trap and clean that up and then we'll put it into the new hose. So now we'll take that coin or button trap and install it in the new hose. Simply push it down into the opening and then expand that bellows so that we can move it down into position. And then just verify that it is the flange on the top of that is sitting in that second rib. Now our next step will be to reinstall that air dome to the hose. You'll find it's easier to put the air dome on the hose, put it in place, and then connect the air dome tube to the open nipple on that air dome. That's the last step. Now the new hose is fairly dry, so you may need to just moisten that a bit to allow it to slide on that air dome a little easier. So compress the spring, slide it as far up under the hose as you can get it. Rotate it into position so that the notch on the hose lines up with that tab on the air dome and verify that it's all the way up against the little ridge there. You'll need to pull that clamp along with it. Once we have that clamped properly, we'll attach the hose to the bottom of the outer tub. Again, we'll slip that clamp down as far in the hose as you can get it. Moisten the inside of that rubber so that it'll fit snugly around that outer tub. Just remove any dirt or debris that may be on that edge that the hose will rest against. Make sure we pull that hose all the way over that flange. We feel around the bottom side and make sure that it is flush up against the tub. Rotate it so that the indicator is lined up with the outer tub. And position that clamp right up at the very top of the hose. And we'll just snug it up a little bit first. verify that the lip of that tub to pump hose is flush against the tub. And if you need to, use a mirror to look in underneath and then tighten it securely. 
Now we'll locate that hose that attaches to the air dome. So just locate that air dome tube and we'll slide it over the end of that air dome. Make sure we have it on the proper outlet, the one with the hole in it. Press it on firmly so that it's on all the way. And then we'll slide the little spring clamp down into position. And then we'll press that little arrowhead tab on that air dome into the hole in the outer tub. Now with the air dome hose attached to the air dome, our next step will be to locate that little arrowhead fastener on the bottom of that air dome housing and snap it into the opening in the tub. So we have to do that by feel. There's a little arrowhead fastener all in the tub. Just press it in until it locks in place. Now that that's secure, we're ready to reattach the tub to pump hose to the pump. So just pull that clamp as far up on that hose as we can, line it up on the pump. Once we start it over there, we need to reach down in Squeeze that clamp shut. And then we can press the hose firmly down onto the pump. Make sure it's snug all the way around. Slide the clamp down into place. Just double check. Push the clamp a little farther down. And then just check it all the way around to make sure. And once we have that secure, we can then start to put the front panel back on. Now with either the washer still laying on its back, or if you wish, you can now stand it up. We're next going to reinstall that front panel. And the first thing we need to do is to reconnect that wire harness connector to the hole in that front panel. that arrowhead fastener and tuck it in behind that lip on that front panel and push it through from the back side. And then lower that panel down into position. Just set it on the cabinet for a moment. We'll open up the door and then just tuck that door lock out of the way. And center of the panel side to side and then keep it up about a half an inch from the very bottom of the base and then it should lay flush across the top line up the post for those keyhole slots so that both sides all the way down are laying flush and then just slide it down until the screw holes line up we'll go ahead and secure the front panel now to the cabinet
and then we'll put the three in across the top. Line up the screw holes and then tighten them in place. Now with the front panel secure, we're going to open up that door and if it's still laying on its back, make sure you have something to do to support that. You can then reach in between the door bellows and the cabinet, locate the door latch assembly. We want to have the wax motor facing down. Just hold it into place. We'll take that latch, the scutch under cover, set that over the latch. Now holding it in place, we'll reinstall the two retaining screws. Tighten those securely. And then we're going to pull our door boot up from the opening. And we'll need to reattach that to the front panel. If we look under the edge of that, you'll see that there's a V groove. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to fit that groove right around that flange on the cabinet. We're locating arrows on both top and bottom. To line up. When the door bellows is properly installed, that lip that lays against the front panel should be flush all the way around. That involves making sure that it's tucked firmly down into that groove. So before we put the band clamp on, just make sure we have that tucked in all the way around. I'm going to take that band clamp Line it up so that the spring will end up at about the six o'clock position. Tuck the spring under that lip. And rotate the band as far around as it will go. And we're holding the spring in place. We're going to grasp the hook on the end of the wire band and we're going to pull it towards us to stretch the spring. At the same time, we use our other hand to tuck that wire down in over the door bellows. Just verify that it dropped all the way into that groove and now we can close up the door. Now when installing the control panel we want to make sure that these two square pins fit into the square openings on the top of the front panel and as well these three clips across the top Need to sit up on top of this support bar across the front. So the easiest way to install this is make sure we tuck the wires in underneath that support bar. Center the control housing side to side. Make sure those three tabs are sitting up on top. And with it tilted out at the bottom, you're just going to rotate it down into position. That will allow these two tabs on the end that the screws go into to slide into position. Now we'll install those two screws. And then we'll put the screws in from the front to secure the detergent dispenser box. Now we're ready to put the dispenser back in. Just line up 
the rails. Short slides freely. Now we can put the main top back on. So we're just going to center it side to side and then lay it about a half an inch back from that back edge of that control panel. Slide it forward so that the front edge tucks in underneath the control panel. And then secure it with the two screws on the back. We can now push the washer back into position. We're now ready to reconnect the water hoses and our power and our repair is complete.